The Centurion, introduced in 1945, was the primary British main battle tank of the post-World War II period. It was a successful tank design, with upgrades, for many decades. The chassis was also adapted for several other roles. Development of the tank began in 1943 and manufacture of the Centurion began in January 1945, six prototypes arriving in Belgium less than a month after the war in Europe ended in May 1945. It first entered combat with the British Army in the Korean War in 1950, in support of the UN forces. The Centurion later served in the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965 where it fought against US-supplied M47 and M48 Patton tanks and they served with the Royal Australian Armoured Corps in Vietnam. Israel used Centurions in the 1967 Six-Day War, 1973 Yom Kippur War, and during the 1978 and 1982 invasions of Lebanon. Centurions modified as armoured personal carriers were used in Gaza, the West Bank and on the Lebanese border. The Royal Jordanian Land Force used Centurions, first in 1970 to fend off a Syrian incursion within its borders during the Black September events and later in the Golan Heights in 1973. South Africa used its Centurions in Angola. It became one of the most widely used tank designs, equipping armies around the world, with some still in service until the 1990s. As recently as the 2006 Israel-Lebanon conflict the Israel Defense Forces employed heavily modified Centurions as armored personal carriers and combat engineering vehicles. South Africa still employs over 200 Centurions, the vehicles of the SANDF were modernized in the 1980s and again in the 2000s, and the resulting model is known as the Oliphant. Between 1946 and 1962. 4,423 Centurions were produced, consisting of 13 basic marks and numerous variants. In British Army use it was replaced by the Chieftain. Development In 1943, the Directorate of Tank Design was asked to produce a new design for a heavy cruiser tank under the General Staff designation A-41. After a series of fairly mediocre designs in the A-series in the past, and bearing in mind the threat posed by the German 88mm gun, the War Office demanded a major revision of the design requirements, specifically, increased durability and reliability, the ability to withstand a directed from the German 88 on gun and providing greater protection against mines, while remaining within a maximum weight of 40 tons. Top speed was not vital, while agility was to be equal to that of the Comet. A high reverse speed was also required. The department produced a larger hull by adapting the long-travel five-wheel suspension used on the Comet with the addition of a sixth wheel, and extending the spacing between the second and third wheels. The Christie suspension, with vertical spring coils between side armor plates, was replaced by a Horstmann suspension with three horizontally sprung, externally mounted two-wheel bogies on each side. The Horstmann design did not offer the same ride quality as the Christie system, but took up less room and was easier to maintain. In case of damage by mines, individual suspension and wheel units could be replaced relatively easily. The hull was redesigned with welded, sloped armor and featured a partially cast turret with the highly regarded 17-pounder as the main gun and a 20 on Polson cannon in an independent mounting to its left. With a rover-built Rolls-Royce Meteor engine, as used on the Comet and Cromwell, the new design would have excellent performance. Shortly after the program commenced, it became clear that the requirement to withstand 88 on weapons would be impossible to meet within the permitted weight. The original specification had been set so that the A-41 could be carried on the existing Mark I and Mark II transport trailers, which were limited to a 40-ton load. The War Ministry decided it would be wiser to build new trailers, rather than hamper what appeared to be a superb design. Even before prototypes of the original 40-ton design were completed, the design of a heavier version was well underway. The new version carried armor equal to the heaviest infantry tanks, while improved suspension and engines provided cross-country performance superior to even the early cruiser tanks. The A-41 was the first British tank that could do it all, leading to the new designation Universal Tank. The design mock-up built by AEC Limited was viewed in May 1944. Subsequently, 
20 pilot models were ordered with various armament combinations, 10 with a 17 PDR and a 20 Impulsion gun, 5 with a 17 PDR, a forward Bisa and an escape door, and 5 with a QF-77 arm gun and a driver-operated hull machine gun. Prototypes of the original 40-ton design, the Centurion Mark I, had 76 arm of armor in the front glasses, which was thinner than that on the then current infantry tanks, which had 101 arm. But the glasses plate was highly sloped, and so the effective thickness of the armor was very high. A Euro a design feature shared by other effective designs, such as the German Panther tank and Soviet T-34. The turret was extremely well armored at 152 arm. The tank was also highly mobile, and easily outperformed the Comet in most tests. The up-armored Centurion Mark II soon arrived. It had a new 118-ohm thick glasses and the side and rear armor had been increased from 38-ohm to 51-ohm. Only a handful of MKI Centurions had been produced when the MK2 replaced it on the production lines. Full production began in November 1945 with an order for 800 on production lines at Leyland Motors, Lancashire the Royal Ordnance Factories at Leeds and Woolwich, and Vickers at Elsick. The tank entered service in December 1946 with the 5th Royal Tank Regiment. Soon after the Centurion's introduction, Royal Ordnance finished work on the Ordnance QF 20-pounder tank gun. By this point, the usefulness of the 20 arm Pulsen had been called into question, it being unnecessarily large for use against troops, so it was replaced with a Bisa machine gun in a completely cast turret. The new Centurion Mark III also featured a fully automatic stabilization system for the gun, allowing it to fire accurately while on the move, dramatically improving battlefield performance. Production of the MK3 began in 1948. The MK3 was so much more powerful than the MK1 and MK2, that the earlier designs were removed from service as soon as new MK3s arrived, and the older tanks were then either converted into the Centurion Armored Recovery Vehicle Mark I for use by the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers or upgraded to MK3 standards. Improvements introduced with the MK3 included a more powerful version of the engine and a new gun sight and gun stabilizer. The 20-pounder gun was used only for a short time before the Royal Ordnance Factories introduced the 105mm L7 gun. All later variants of the Centurion, from Mark V-2 on, used the L7. Design work for the MK7 was completed in 1953, with production beginning soon afterwards. The Centurion was used as the basis for a range of specialist equipment, including combat engineering variants with a 165-arm demolition gun armored vehicle Royal Engineers. It is one of the longest-serving designs of all time, serving as a battle tank for the British and Australian armies from the Korean War to the Vietnam War, and as an AVRE during the Gulf War in January a Euro February 1991. Service History, Korean War, on November 14, 1950, the British Army's 8th King's Royal Irish Hussars, equipped with three squadrons of Centurion Mk-3 tanks, landed in Pusan. Operating in sub-zero temperatures, the 8th Hussars learned the rigors of winter warfare, their tanks had to be parked on straw to prevent the steel tracks from freezing to the ground, with engines having to be started every half hour, with each gear being engaged in turn to prevent them from being frozen into place. During the Battle of the Imjin River, Centurions won lasting fame when their tanks covered the withdrawal of the 29th Brigade, with the loss of five tanks, most later recovered and repaired. In 1953, Centurions of the 1st Royal Tank Regiment were also involved in the Second Battle of the Hook where they played a significant role in repelling Chinese attacks. In a tribute to the 8th Hussars, General John O'Daniel, commanding the U.S. 1st Corps, stated, In their Centurions, the 8th Hussars have evolved a new type of tank warfare. They taught us that anywhere a tank can go, is tank country, even the tops of mountains. Vietnam War In 1967, the Royal Australian Armoured Corps, 1st Armoured Personal Carrier Squadron transferred to A Squadron, 3rd Cavalry Regiment Vietnam. 
although they successfully conducted combat operations in their areas of operations, reports from the field stated that their light armor were unable to force their way through dense jungle limiting their offensive actions against enemy forces. The Australian government, under criticism from Parliament, decided to send a squadron of Australian Centurion tanks to South Vietnam. The 20 PD armed Australian Centurions of Sea Squadron, 1st Armoured Regiment landed in the Republic of Vietnam on February 24, 1968, and were headquartered at Nui Dat in Three Corps. Colonel Donald Dunstan, later to be Governor of South Australia, was the Deputy Task Force Commander of the Australian Forces in South Vietnam. Colonel Dunstan had quite possibly been the last Australian to use tanks and infantry in a combined arms operation during World War II, during the Bougainville Campaign. And, for the first time since World War II, Colonel Dunstan would be commanding Australia's tanks and infantry in combat. When he temporarily took over command during Brigadier Ronald Hughes' absence, he directed that the Centurions be brought up from Nui Dat to reinforce the fire bases at Coral and Balmoral, believing that they were a strong element that were not being used. Besides adding a great deal of firepower, Dunstan stated, he couldn't see any reason why they shouldn't be there. His foresight enabled the first Australian task force to inflict approximately 267 enemy casualties during the six-week-long Battle of Kerala Euro Balmoral, as well as capturing 11 prisoners, 36 crew served weapons, 112 small arms, and other miscellaneous enemy weapons. After the battles at Firebases Coral and Balmoral, in which the 1ATF defeated the 141st and 165th NVA Infantry Regiments in May 1968. A third Centurion troop, which included two tank dozers, was formed. By September 1968, C Squadron was brought to its full strength of four troops, each equipped with four Centurion tanks. By 1969, B Squadron, 3rd Cavalry. A squadron, 1st Armoured Regiment, B Squadron, 1st Armoured Regiment, and C Squadron, 1st Armoured Regiment, had all made rotations through South Vietnam. Originally deployed as 26 Centurion tanks, after three and a half years of combat operations, 58 Centurions had served in country. 42, of which six were beyond repair, had suffered battle damage, and two crewmen had been killed in action. The Centurion crews, after operating for a few weeks in country, soon learned to remove the protective armored side skirts from both sides of the tank, to prevent the vegetation and mud from building up between the track and the mud guards. Each Centurion in Vietnam normally carried a basic load of 62 rounds of 20-a-pounder shells, 4,000 rounds of .50 calories and 9,000 rounds of .30 calories machine gun ammunition for the tank commander's machine gun as well as the two coaxial machine guns. They were equipped with petrol engines, which necessitated the use of an extra externally mounted 100 Imperial gallon fuel tank, which was attached to the vehicle's rear. Middle East Israel's formerly British Centurions, first delivered in the late 1950s, were renamed shot by the Israelis and heavily upgraded following their purchase. When the Six-Day War broke out in 1967, the Israel Defense Forces had 293 Centurion tanks that were ready for combat out of a total of 385 tanks. During the war, Israel captured 30 of Jordan's 44 Centurion tanks. The Israeli version of the Centurion and its legendary status during the Battle of the Valley of Tears on the Golan Heights in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Fewer than 100 Centurion tanks of the 7th Armored Brigade defeated the advance of some 500 Syrian T-55s and T-62s. The shot became emblematic of Israeli armor prowess. The original Centurions had 20-pounder main guns, but these were quickly upgunned to the British 105 ML7. The vehicles went through a number of both major and minor modifications, culminating in the shot with blazer package seen in the 1982 invasion of Lebanon and retired with honor during the 1990s. The biggest modifications were the upgrade of the engine, sights and blazer packages. The engine has been changed to a more efficient diesel design, fire control has been modernized, 
armor has been thickened, and an improved ammunition layout allows more rounds to be carried. An improved fire extinguishing system, better electrical system and brakes, and an increased fuel capacity complete the modifications. The Charot can be distinguished from the Centurion by its raised rear deck, to accommodate the bigger engine. They have American radios and either have the original 7.62 ohm caliber MG on the commander's cupola or have it replaced by a 12.7 ohm caliber HMG. Many different variants were bought by Israel over the years from many different countries. Many components of these would find their way into the Merkava, 1991 Gulf War. In the 1991 Gulf War, 12 FV-4003 Centurion Mk-5 AVREs were deployed with 32 Armoured Engineer Regiment as part of British operations during the war. Three were lost in training in two separate incidents involving vehicle fires and detonation of munitions. One AVRE was destroyed on February 5, 1991 and two were destroyed in a second incident the next day. Four minor injuries were sustained. South Africa the Centurion tank was in use by the South Africans since 1957 a Euro at first, 250 Mk2 and Mk3 Centurions bought directly from the UK, but later, South Africa bought Mk5 Centurions from India and Jordan. Starting in 1970, the UN imposed ever more restrictive arms embargoes on South Africa, due to its apartheid practices and human rights violations. This forced South Africa to develop its own arms industry and this included upgrading the Centurion tanks. Until the 1980s or so, South Africa Euro unregistered trademark S enemies had nothing to compare to the tanks that the South Africans were fielding at any particular time. The South Africans improved and upgraded their tanks throughout the border war in Namibia and Angola. The first upgrades made to the Centurions were simple, and primarily for test purposes. In 1972, the Centurion was fitted with a V12 fuel-injected petrol engine developing 810 HP coupled to a new three-speed automatic transmission. This project was called the Skokian, but only eight conversions were made. This was followed by the Semmel project in 1974, which involved fitting the eight Skokian vehicles and some unconverted Centurions with a modified engine and some other improvements and these were called the Centurion MK5A or Semmel. A total of 35 of these vehicles was produced and some were used in the then Southwest Africa. The South Africans undertook a much more ambitious upgrade program in 1976, producing the Oliphant. The Oliphant Mk1 entered service with the South African Armoured Corps in 1978. The Oliphant program benefited greatly from the Israelis a Euro unregistered trademark shot program. Oliphant Mk1 had an upgraded engine, better suspension, turret drive, and night vision equipment. The commander had a handheld laser range finder. The Oliphant Mk1 later received a major upgrade as the Mk1A entered production in 1983 and entered service in 1985. This was because it was discovered, particularly in combats in Angola, that the Oliphant Mk1 and its 20-pounder main gun could not match the T-55. Production stopped in the mid-1980s. Nonetheless, Despite the numbers produced and the fact that the MK1A was meant to be an interim solution for use until the advent of the MK1B version. In the MK1A, the main gun was replaced with the 105mm L7 rifled gun and eight smoke grenade discharges were installed on either side of the turret. A new engine was also installed and the armor was upgraded. The laser range finder was incorporated into the gunner's sight, and the night vision equipment was upgraded. The MK-1B was a new production vehicle, rather than an upgrade of existing Centurions or Oliphants. Development of the MK-1B started in 1983 and it entered production in 1991. The tank carries 68 rounds of ammunition for its 105mm L7 rifled main gun, which is fitted with a thermal sleeve. The tank is also fitted with a coaxial 7.62mm general purpose machine gun and a 7.62mm anti-aircraft machine gun. The driver's station is equipped with a day and night sight and the gunner's station is fitted with day and night sights and an integrated laser range finder. Because of the high number of mines deployed in neighboring African countries, 
its belly armor was doubled and new side skirts added. The glacis plate and nose of the hull have been upgraded with the addition of passive armor and the turret has been fitted with standoff armor. The vehicle can generate a smoke screen by injecting fuel on the engine's hot exhaust and a fire suppression system was added to the crew fighting compartment. A computerized fire control system was added and a searchlight over the main gun. In October 2003, Alvis OMC was awarded a contract for the upgrade of a number of Oliphant MK1 BMBTs. It included upgrades in the power pack, fire control and training systems. Up to the end of 1987, South Africa was involved in a full intervention in the Angolan Civil War, and Oliphant tanks were sent into combat, participating with success against Angolan forces near the Lomba River. On September 1, tank combat occurred. Oliphants ran across Angolan T-55s and T-34-85s, destroying some of them. At Kuito Kyanavale, Oliphants and Rake infantry fighting vehicles fought T-55s and T-34-85s, claiming that the only losses to the Oliphants came from mines. The Cuban Revolutionary Armed Forces claimed that, during the same battle, the 50th Cuban Division T-62s halted South African tanks at the Shambhangi River. The MK-2 is an up-armored and fire control equipment turret which can be fitted with a 120mm smoothbore cannon on the MK-1B chassis. Sweden, at the end of World War II, it was clear that the mix of tanks in service with the Swedish armed forces was not just obsolete but also presented a large logistical problem. Kung Legal Armor Copyright Far Paragraph Revalt Ninjans Tigabdulning conducted a study that concluded that the most cost-effective alternative would be to purchase the newly developed Centurion Mk3, which while quite modern was judged to also have upgrade potential for future requirements. A request of purchase was sent to Great Britain, but the reply was that no deliveries could be made before the needs of the British Army had been satisfied which was deemed to take between 5 and 15 years. Thus. In 1951, the Vehicle Bureau of KAFT was set to develop a Swedish alternative project, AMIELL. Parallel with this, negotiations were initiated with France about buying the AMX-13. All this took an abrupt halt when the British, in early December 1952, offered to sell the desired Centurions immediately. Minister of Defense Torsen Nilsson arbitrarily placed an order of 80 Mk3 around New Year 1952-1953, with first delivery in April 1953. A few years later, Sweden ordered a batch of 160 Centurion Mkv, followed by a third batch on 110 Centurion Mkx around 1960. The Centurions formed the backbone of the Swedish armored brigades for several decades. The MK3s and the MKVs were upgraded with a 105mm gun in the 1960s. In the years 1983 Euro 1987, the Centurions had a midlife renovation and modification done, which included among other things night vision equipment, targeting systems, laser range finders, improved gun stabilization, thermal sleeves on the barrel and exhaust pipes and reactive armor developed by the Swedish FFV Ordnance. The Swedish Army gradually phased out its Centurions during the 1990s as a consequence of its extensive reorganization after the end of the Cold War and the dissolution of the Soviet Union. They were replaced by the Leopard U. Nuclear Tests, an Australian Army Mk3 Centurion Type K, Army Registration No. 169041, was involved in a small nuclear test at Emu Field in Australia in 1953 as part of Operation Totem 1. Built as No. 39-190 at the Royal Ordnance Factory, Bonbeau in 1951 it was assigned the British Army No. 6 BA-16 and supplied to the Australian Commonwealth Government under contract 2843 in 1952. It was placed less than 500 yards from the 9.1 carats blast with its turret facing the epicentre, left with the engine running and a full ammunition load. Examination after detonation found it had been pushed away from the blast point by about five feet, pushed slightly left and that its engine had stopped working, only because it had run out of fuel. Antennae were missing, lights and periscopes were heavily sandblasted, the cloth mantlet cover was incinerated, and the armored side plates had been blown off and carried up to 200 yards from the tank. 
Remarkably, though, the tank could still be driven from the site. Had it been manned, the crew would probably have been killed by the shock wave. 169,041, subsequently nicknamed the Atomic Tank, was used in the Vietnam War. In May 1969, during a firefight, 169,041 was hit by a rocket-propelled grenade. The turret crew were all wounded by shrapnel as the RPG entered the lower left side of the fighting compartment, traveled diagonally across the floor and lodged in the rear right corner. Trooper Carter was evacuated while the others remained on duty and the tank remained battle-worthy. The atomic tank is now located at Robertson Barracks in Palmerston, Northern Territory. Although other tanks were subjected to nuclear tests, 169,041 is the only tank known to have withstood atomic tests and to go on for another 23 years of service, including 15 months on operational deployment in a war zone. Variants, UK variants. Centurion production mark numbers, Centurion MK1, 17 PD armed version, Centurion MK2, fully cast turret. Centurion MK3, fitted with 20 PDR, two stowage positions for track links on glassies, Centurion MK4, projected close support version with 95 MCS howitzer, Centurion MK5, Browning machine guns fitted to coaxial and commander's cupola mounts, stowage bin on glassies, Centurion MK5-1 also known as FVA-4011, increased glassies armor, two coax machine guns. 1.30 Browning and 1.50 caliber Browning for ranging the 84mm main gun. Centurion MK5-2, upgun to 105mm, Centurion MK6, upgunned and up-armored MK5, Centurion MK6-1, MK6 fitted with IR equipment, Centurion MK6-2, MK6-1 fitted with ranging gun. Centurion MK7 also known as FVA 4007, revised engine decks, Centurion MK7-1 also known as FVA 4012, up-armored MK7, Centurion MK7-2, up-gunned MK7, Centurion MK8, resilient mantlet and new commander's cupola, Centurion MK8-1, up-armored MK8, Centurion MK8-2, Upgunned MK8, Centurion MK9 also known as FVA 4015, upgunned and up-armored MK7, Centurion MK9-1, MK9 with IR equipment, Centurion MK9-2, MK9 with ranging gun fitted, Centurion MK10 also known as FVA 4017, upgunned and up-armored MK8, Centurion MK10-1, MK10 with IR equipment, Centurion MK-10-2, MK-10 with ranging gun fitted, Centurion MK-11, MK-6 fitted with IR equipment and ranging gun, Centurion MK-12, MK-9 fitted with IR equipment and ranging gun, Centurion MK-13, MK-10 fitted with IR equipment and ranging gun, prototypes, A-41, 20 on, Centurion prototype with coaxial pulse and cannon, a41, BISA, Centurion prototype with coaxial BISA MGA Euro later fitted with experimental CDL, fighting vehicle numbers. FVA 3802A, self propelled 25 PDR artillery prototype based on the Centurina Euro engine at the rear as in the gun tank, but only five road wheels per side. The gun was fitted in a barbette with 45 a degree traverse to each side. Accepted in principle in 1954, but abandoned in favor of FV-3805 in 1956. FVA-3805A, self-propelled 5.5 in artillery prototype, again based on the Centurina Euro engine at the front and driver over the track good. Project stopped in 1960 in favor of the FV-433 105mm SP Abbott. FVA-4002 Centurion MK-5 Bridge Elena. 1963, a Euro MK5 chassis with a No. 5 tank bridge. The 52 FT by 13 FT bridge can be launched in less than two minutes, can span a gap of 45 FT and with a height difference of up to 8 FT and can bear up to 80 tons. FVA 4003 Centurion MK5 AVRE 165, 
1963, a Euro AVRE vehicle with a 165 armed demolition gun with a range of about 2,000 yards and firing a 60 LBHESH projectile for breaching obstacles. It was fitted with a hydraulically operated dozer blade or a mine plow and could carry a Fasign bundle or a roll of metal Class 60 trackway, tow the Viper mine clearance equipment or a trailer. This variant had a five-man crew and was used in the 1991 Gulf War. FVA 4004 Conway R, FVA 4004 self-propel gun, 120mm, L1 gun, MK3 prototype based on a Centurion 3 hull with a larger caliber 120mm L1 gun in a turret made from rolled plate. To be an interim design until Conqueror tank entered service. One built before the project was cancelled in 1951. FV 4005 Stage 2 A, an experimental tank destroyer with a 183 mm gun. Project started in 1951-52, and developed in July 1955. It used a lightly armored, fully enclosed and traversable turret on a Centurion hull. By August 1957, the tank destroyer was dismantled. FVA 4006 Centurion ARV MK2, 1956, a Euro MK1-MK2-MK3 hull with the turret replaced by a superstructure housing a winch. The winch is powered by an auxiliary engine and is capable of pulling of up to 90 tons using a system of blocks. Armed with a single .30 inch machine gun on the commander's cupola. FVA 4007 Centurion MK1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8 slash 1, 8 slash 2, FV 4008 duplex drive amphibious landing kit, 12 lightweight panels forming a skirt around a permanently fixed deck. The panels are jettisoned with explosive charges. FV A4010 also known as heavy tank destroyer GW carrier, Malkara anti-tank guided missile launcher vehicle, FV A4011 Centurion MK5, FVA 4012 Centurion MK7 slash 1, 7 slash 2, FVA 4013 Centurion ARV MK1, 1952, a Euro based on MK1 slash MK2 hull. Turret replaced by a superstructure housing a winch driven by a 72 HP Bedford QL truck engine. About 180 units were built, some of them were used in the Korean War. After 1959, they were just used as training vehicles. FVA 4015 Centurion MK9, FVA 4016 Centurion Arc, 1963, a Euro armored ramp carrier. Built on a Mark V, the vehicle itself is part of the bridge. It can span a gap of up to 75 feet, and can bear up to 80 tons. FVA 4017 Centurion MK10, FVA 4018 Centurion Bev, Beach Armoured Recovery Vehicle. The last Centurion variant to be used by the British Army. One vehicle was still in use by the Royal Marines until 2003. Replaced by the Hippo, which is based on a Leopard 1 chassis. FVA 4019 Centurion MK5 Bulldozer, 1961, a Euro Centurion MKV with a dozer blade identical to that of the Centurion AVRE. One such tank was usually given to every Centurion equipped squadron. FVA 4202 40-ton Centurion, used to develop various concepts later used in the Chieftain, Specialist variants, Centurion, Low Profile, variant with Teledin Low Profile Turret, Centurion, MMWR Target, Cobble Together Radar Target Tank. Centurion Marksman, fitted with Marksman Air Defense Turret. Centurion Arc also known as FVA-4016, Assault Gap Crossing Equipment, Centurion ARV MK-1, Armored Recovery Vehicle, Centurion ARV MK-2, Armored Recovery Vehicle with Superstructure, Centurion AVLB, Dutch Armored Vehicle Lane Bridge, Centurion AVRE-105, Combat Engineer Version Armed with 105 mm Gun, Centurion AVRE-165. Combat Engineer version armed with 165mm L9A1 gun, Centurion Bev, Beach Armored Recovery Vehicle, Centurion Bridge LA also known as FVA 4002, Class 80 Bridge LA, Centurion MK. 12 AVRE 105, 
X-4 artillery observer vehicles converted to AVRE role. Non-UK variants. Denmark, Centurion MKV-2, AMKV upgraded with the British 105mm L7A1 gun in the Browning coaxial machine gun replaced by the German MG3. 106 MK Versus were upgraded from 1964. Centurion MKV, 2 DK MK5, 2 with laser range finder and night vision optics. 90 units were upgraded in 1985. Israel, shot, an Israeli designation of the Centurion. Shot Meteor, Centurion MK5 tanks with the original Meteor engine purchased in 1959. Shot Cal Elf Jimal Modernized Centurion tanks with 105mm gun from 1963, a new power pack. Entered service in 1970. By 1974 all Israeli Centurions were upgraded to shot cowl and had a pintle mounted .50 calories HMG. Subvariants indicate upgrades received by shot cowl tanks during their operational life, including a new turret rotating mechanism, a new gun stabilizer, a new fire control system and preparations for the installation of the Blazer ERA. Nagmashot slash Nagmashan slash Nagpidon, Israeli heavy armored personal carriers based on Centurion tanks chassis. Puma, Israeli combat engineering vehicle on Centurion tank chassis. Eshel Hayarden, a quadruple tubular launcher for 290 on ground to ground rockets mounted on Centurion tank chassis. The project was cancelled after a single prototype was built. Both this vehicle and an earlier version based on Sherman chassis are often referred to as March 290. Tempest, operated by Singapore, modernized with Israeli assistance, similar to Israeli variant, with diesel engine and new main gun, and possibly reactive armor. South Africa, Oliphant. Centurion tanks redesigned and rebuilt by South Africa with the help of Israel considered the best indigenous tank design on the African continent. Semel, 1974, 810 horsepower fuel-injected petrol engine, three-speed semi-automatic transmission. Oliphant MK1, 1978, 750 horsepower diesel engine, semi-automatic transmission. Oliphant MK1A, 1985, retains the fire control system of the original Centurion, but has a handheld laser range finder for the commander and image intensifier for the gunner. Oliphant MK1B, 1991, torsion bar suspension, length and hull, additional armor on the glacis plate and turret, V12 950 horsepower diesel engine, computerized fire control system, laser range finder. Oliphant MK2, redesigned turret, new fire control system. Can mount LIW 105mm GT8 rifle gun or 120mm smooth bore gun. Sweden, the designations follows the pattern of main gun caliber in centimeters followed by the order number. Hence the STRV 81 is read as the first tank with 8 ACM gun, while the STRV 101 is the first tank with 10 ACM gun accepted into service. Stridsvarn 81 Swedish Army designation for both the initial ATMK-3 Centurions and the 1955 purchase of 160 MK-5 Centurions, all with Imperial instrumentation, Swedish radios, etc. Pre-NATO threading made the screws incompatible with the later STRV-101. Stridsvarn 101 Swedish Army designation for its 110 MK-10 Centurions bought in 1958 with Swedish instrumentation and radios, etc. Stridsvarn 102, Swedish Army designation for Stridsvarn 81 upgunned in 1964 Euro 1966 to 105 a main gun. Stridsvarn 101R, Swedish Army designation for Stridsvarn 101 upgraded in 1980s with a EMO. Stridsvarn 102R, Swedish Army designation for Stridsvarn 102 upgraded in 1980s with a EMO and frontal armor matching the 101R, Stridsvarn 104, Swedish Army designation for the 80 Stridsvarn 102 which in addition to the REMO received the same power pack as the shot Cal Elf, consisting of a Continental diesel and an automatic gearbox from Allison. Stridsvarn 105, 
Swedish Army designation for Stridsvan 102 are upgraded with new suspension, fee control systems etc. Prototype only. Stridsvan 106, Swedish Army designation for Stridsvan 101 are upgraded with new suspension, etc. Not built. Bar currency Rubningsbandvan 81, Swedish Army designation for Centurion ARV. Operators, current. Israel gun tanks retired, many hulls converted to Nagmarshan APCs, Nakpadon ARVs or Puma CEVs. Jordan chassis reused for the modern Temps APC, Libya, Somalia, Somaliland. Originally supplied to the Somali Armed Forces. South Africa in service as the indigenously developed and upgraded MK1 AB and MK2 Oliphant, former, Australia replaced by Leopard 1. Austria fixed in bunkers. Canada replaced by Leopard C1. Many of the tanks were sold to Israel which converted them to diesel. Some are still in use as variants. Denmark replaced by Leopard 1. Egypt replaced by T-55s, T-62s, M-60A3S and M-1A1S. India retired, Iraq retired, Kuwait retired, Lebanon, Netherlands replaced by Leopard 1. New Zealand 12 retired without replacement. Singapore 63 Centurion MK3 and MK7S bought from India in 1975 and more from Israel in 1993 April, all upgraded to Israeli standard with new main guns and diesel engines it has since been replaced by the Leopard 2 SGs. Sweden replaced by Stratzvan 122, Switzerland replaced by Leopard 2, United Kingdom replaced by Chieftain, Combat History, Korean War a Euro United Kingdom, Suez Crisis a Euro United Kingdom, War of 1965 a Euro India, Six Day War a Euro Israel, Jordan, Liberation of Bangladesh War of 1971 a Euro India, Yom Kippur War a Euro Israel, Jordan, Vietnam War a Euro Australia, Angolan Civil War a Euro South Africa, Operation Motorman a Euro United Kingdom. 165 Omei VREs with dozer blades were used to destroy barricades set up by the IRA in Northern Ireland. The 165 Omei demolition guns were pointed to the rear and covered up. Falklands War A Euro United Kingdom, Single Centurion Bev, Gulf War Operation Desert Storm A Euro United Kingdom as Centurion AVREs, see also Tanks of Comparable Role, Performance and Era T-54 55 approximate Soviet equivalent, M-48 Patrona approximate U.S. equivalent, references, notes, bibliography, external links, Centurion Armour Technical Data, British Imperial War Museum, Centurion, Australian Centurions, Redoubt Fortress Museum home of an example of a Mark III Centurion tank, Dutch Cavalry Museum has two Centurion tanks in its collection. Oliphant MK1 B details on army-technology.com. Centurion MK5 and 5 1 details on Australian MK5 and 5 1.